hello and happy Sunday everybody this is Kelly with if you have an egg.com and today is Sunday January the 7th 2024 even though I just realized that I mismarked my notes they still say 2023 but hello hello everybody I missed you all enormously and um, I'm only here because I missed you all still feeling pretty cruddy um I've got one cough drop in I've got another one at the ready and I've got some hot tea at the ready just in case but I have missed you all ferociously um, and to be honest I'm tired of just laying around on the couch resting so I thought I would come in for a little bit hello Marlene um, I hope you all had great holidays I completely missed Christmas missed New Year's hello Catherine from Lowell North Carolina so I didn't get to chat with many of you all because we were just down and out and so in case you didn't hear we had the flu over Christmas and mine developed into bronchitis so I have a lovely barking cough now hello Carol it's good to see you too but I had this lovely barking cough now so I'm hoping um, that I will not start coughing while we are chatting. And hello, Katie. It's good to see you. Um, <clears throat> I can tell you there's no way that I will make it the entire hour. Hello, Sandra from Dingman's Ferry. And hello, Sarah from Raleigh, Massachusetts. Um, yep, and I am slowly recovering. Um, still, I feel better. I feel much better. Thanks for checking on me. And hello, Mary. <clears throat> oh, no, and Mary just had Christmas today due to, uh, due to the flu. Yeah, it is rampant. And hello, Mary from Pennsylvania. And hello, Elaine. Good to see you, too. Um, so Tennessee was ranked number one, I think, over the week of Christmas for respiratory illnesses. We had the flu. My friend Karen's family had COVID. Almost everybody we knew had somebody, had, a, had at least one family member um, that was sick over Christmas. So, again, I hate that I missed you all um, twice. Um, and, yeah, Marlene, I do agree with that. So I hate that I missed you all twice. And we were going to try and do another pre-recorded chat for New Year's Eve, which was also Alyssa's birthday. And hello, Sylvia. Um, and <clears throat> yeah, didn't happen. So Casey and I spent the better part of a week just kind of laying, you know, laying around being waited on hand and foot by John and the girls were up and down, up and down. They'd feel better for a little while and then they would just crash again. So it was a, yeah, it's been a weird last two weeks. Um, and still, anyway, still trying to get rid of the bronchitis and um, got plenty new, plenty of new medications for that. So I'll try not to go into a coughing fit, but I can already tell you, I will not make it the entire hour. So a little bit of news and hello Trisha yes and happy new year everybody Merry Christmas I missed you know I didn't get a chance to tell everybody Merry Christmas and I sure didn't get to tell you all um happy new year so happy new year everyone we did manage to have a teeny teeny tiny 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 little celebration for Alyssa for her sixth birthday and hello Debbie I am feeling a little bit better um but again I will not make it the entire hour because I promise you a coughing fit will come here in about 45 minutes so if it doesn't come before then I can guarantee it'll come in about 45 minutes because it will be time for me to take my inhaler again um <clears throat> but we did have a tiny celebration for her but I'm so sorry I missed you all um I wish that it had been for something fun but oh well maybe we'll be done with the maybe we'll be done with the illness now um so there's already a lot going on this year hello Marlene happy new year and <clears throat> there's already a lot going on this year including app changes app unchanges hello Hattie and then Rechanges. Hello, Jennifer. Um, and I'll try to stay, I'll try to keep this cough under control long enough to do tonight's chat, but then hopefully next week we can dig into all those changes. So I, and I know Carol Lou, I'm so sorry. I, heard, I did hear about that. And hello, Kathy. Um, so I'll try to dig into some more of that for next week. So surely to goodness, after I get done with this round of prednisone and an inhaler and cough medicine and, 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 and hello, Ben. Surely to goodness, next Sunday, I will feel like actually talking or chat. Those people don't need to be calling this late at night. Um, <clears throat> but hopefully we'll be able to dig into that some more next week because apparently I missed a lot la uh, this last week while I was not paying attention to everything. Um, also, a little bit of news um, for January 2024. Julie over in our If You Have an Egg Facebook group, she is hostessing some great challenges. <coughs> don't start coughing. Starting this week. The details are going to be printed. Um, are going to be printed here when Casey um, when Casey gets this posted. But um, here are the brief details. You can go over to if you have an egg, the if you have an egg Facebook group and find out what those challenges are. Um, but like here's the weekly rotation. So she's going to do a vegetable challenge the first week, which is this week. Then the next week it'll be a track it challenge. The next one is a workout challenge. The next week is a water challenge. <clears throat> the next week following week after that is a lean protein challenge. And then on week six, it will be a swap for less points challenge. And she's going to try and keep rotating those every six weeks. 
so that we've got something fun and fresh, you know, for all the six weeks. And if it's a challenge that fits you, great, jump right in. If it's not a challenge that fits you, like if you think, mm, I'm not really going to do a water challenge or, you know, whatever. If one of them just doesn't fit what you're doing, just watch everybody else and then you can join in the next week. But thank you very much, Julie, for um, hostessing those. And hello, Anna. Happy New Year. Um, again, <clears throat> we've been very under the weather, had the flu. Mine has settled into bronchitis in my chest. So hopefully I sound okay. Um, <clears throat> but I can promise you in about 45 minutes I will start coughing again. Hello, Joycelyn. Um, yeah, because it'll be time for me to do my inhaler and all of my medications again. This is actually the latest I've been up in two weeks. So it is 8.06 here in East Tennessee. I have not been up past about 7.30, 7.45 for the last two weeks because we've been so sick. So happy to be here with you all. <clears throat> Won't make it the entire hour. Okay, so that was a little bit of news. It's been two weeks since I've seen all of you all. So I need to know who has been to any in-person workshop. So if at any point in the last two weeks you've been to an in-person workshop, let me see some thumbs ups. <clears throat> and I have so missed hearing from all of you all. Hello, Loretta. Or if you did any Zoom workshops, let me see some thumbs ups for that. And I love the big bubble thumbs up. If you were here with us live two weeks ago, hello, Cynthia. Oh no, they had COVID over Christmas. Oh no, it just stinks. But let me see some hearts if you were here with us live two weeks ago, or if you went back later and watched On Demand, or if you watched um, the pre-recorded chat that Casey and I did um, week before last. Let's see some hearts for that. Yep, bravo everybody for sticking with it during the holidays, whether you were sick or not, whether you were healthy or sick, or you know, what, whatever. Oh, Loretta, I'm glad you're feeling better too. <clears throat> and then hello, Kim. But bravo stickers to everybody for sticking with it through the holidays. Good job, everybody. And hello, um, Susie. <clears throat> yeah, I'm trying to feel better. I'm trying to get to get on there. And let's see, Debbie says, if anyone needs to be a part of the Facebook group, to go over, go over and sign up all the questions. And she just posted the link. So um, thank you very much, Debbie. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much for that. And Debbie, I have to say, my Facebook page has been wearing me out with all of our past trips um, to Disney during the Christmas season. And that was really... Being sick and then seeing all of those was really kind of, you know, while we were stuck in bed. Okay, like two weeks ago was chat number 346, and we were talking about speeding up meal planning. <clears throat> and so two weeks ago when we talked about this, we still had eight days until Christmas. We had 13 days until Casey's 30th birthday. We had 14 days until Alyssa's birthday. And then, of course, we had Casey and Alan's anniversary, New Year's Eve, blah, 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 blah. We did, thank goodness, do some meal planning. Um, that was a great idea. We had done that before everybody started getting sick. And we had like four, I think we had quadruple, like a quadruple batch of sausage balls. We had plenty of buffalo chicken dip. Um, John had gotten Kentucky Fried Chicken enough to last for days. So thank, oh, and he got a huge lasagna. So thank goodness we had done some meal planning before everybody got sick. Or that week would have been an absolute disaster but what we were talking about was leaning on some um, options like some um, <clears throat> pre-cooked, low prep, um, for even for some frozen meals um, that could help. Um, things like rotisserie chickens, getting those and going ahead and taking the skin off, getting those broken down and put up in you know, individual baggies, getting some pre-washed veggies and fruit, um, even you know even frozen dinners, added, like adding a can of peas or something to it. And that's pretty much what we lived on this last two weeks. Um, if you were missing or, lim and, or had limited ingredients, um, I shared a website from allrecipes.com where they gave some, um, some easy substitutions for things that you may or may not have in your um, kitchen if you needed to swap something out quickly or if you just weren't in the mood to make anything. Um, a lot of people don't enjoy baking and making things during the, you know, the holiday season, so I had suggested setting aside a day to try a new recipe, maybe getting together with, a, with family members or friends, you know, and cooking something. And I have to tell you, Casey and I had a good time making the sausage balls and to make it a double, um, to go ahead and double up on whatever it is that you're making so that you can have two batches and you can have, you know, you can have one batch then, <coughs> you can enjoy one then, I'm not going to cough. You can enjoy one then, and then you could have another one for later. We did that with waffles. We had made some of the um, some of my Kodiak Cakes protein waffles. We made a triple batch of those and still have some in the freezer. We'd made like a quadruple batch of the sausage balls. So anyway, we did that with several things. This morning, I made extra French toast for everybody so that if they, while I was attempting to have a chat, if they wanted to have something else, they could have um, some French toast. So your homework for that week was hashtag make it a double 
and I wanted you to let us know what are you going to make double of over the next over those next couple of weeks um, so that you could have some then and you could enjoy some later. So let's see how y'all did for your homework. Um, Madison made a double batch of individual peanut butter cheesecakes and they were only three points each and they look fantastic. And I have a feeling, Aloha Kathy, I have a feeling the way she had them, the containers that she had them in, she probably could put some of them in the freezer and have them just pull them out and let them thaw and have them whenever she wanted to. Deanna says she always, always, always makes double soup and then she uses the extra soup for lunches. It's a great idea. Julie, two weeks ago, I think it was, made homemade split pea soup and she used lots and lots and lots of veggies. And I remember Julie is hosting, hostessing our, um, our kind of our veggie challenge this week, but she made a split pea soup with lots of extra veggies. It came to only two points, so she was able to accompany, accompany her soup with a slice of crusty bread for four points, only six points for her dinners, and it made it Mediterranean diet friendly. She and her husband are trying to do that. He's having, they're both having some minor health issues right now, <coughs> so she's trying to kind of incorporate a Mediterranean diet with her Weight Watchers plan. And the rest of it, she was gonna freeze and use for when she goes back to work. Perfect plan, perfect, perfect, perfect ladies. Good job, and hello Lisa from Arkansas. <coughs> and sorry, I'm talking so fast. I'm trying to get it through as much of the chat that I can and interact with as many of you as I can before I start having a coughing fit. But bravo everyone for getting your homework done. Good job, good job, good job, especially for getting this done over the holidays. Okay, this week, we're going to talk about how to set goals that work for you. Um, this came in perfect timing for me because I needed something um, from this recovery week, you know, from being. So we were sick for a week. Um, now, I never got any better. I got better from the flu, but I immediately went straight into bronchitis. So we've, you know, gotten better, gotten better. Bronchitis now. So totally different set of symptoms, totally different set of issues. But... Um, this time we're going to talk about setting star goals. Over the years we have chatted and chatted and chatted and chatted some more about star goals. S-T-A-R. Um, and hello Sherry from Cape Coral, Florida. Oh, by the way, if you're new, I don't always sound like this. We have been desperately sick for the last two weeks. Um, and I'm just, I was tired of laying on the couch. And I was tired of not being with you all. So I decided to go ahead and have the chat tonight if I can keep the cough under control. So I've got double cough drops going some hot tea with some honey over here, so I'm ready to attack it if I start coughing. Um, but over the years we have that we have chatted and chatted and chatted again about STAR goals, S-T-A-R goals. That used to be one of my least favorite topics from Weight Watchers. Seriously, like every year when it would come up, I'd be like, oh my gosh, are we doing this one again? Um, but now that I fully embrace the do instead of the don't, this is one of my favorite topics. So. I used to always think about setting, you know, some of these goals, I would think about it set, like setting, like, you know what I'm not going to do. Like, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do this anymore. <clears throat> you know, it's a new year. I'm going to stop doing whatever. Like, I don't smoke, but people who say I'm going to stop smoking, you know, for 2024, or my new, re my new year's resolution is to stop eating sugar. So once I fully embraced and understood that star goals were about something I was going to do, plan to do, instead of something I was planning not to do. Hello Mindy, good to see you too. <coughs> it's now one of my favorite topics. So here's how Weight Watchers breaks this down. And hello Chana, here's how they break this down. Four steps to a perfect, perfect for you star goal. Okay, so it's gotta be perfect for you. It doesn't have to be perfect for me, it's gotta be perfect for you. The first one is specific. So this is S-T-A-R. So the S stands for specific. Goals don't have to be big. Um, they don't even have to be fancy, but they do need to be very specific. If you can't measure the results, then you'll never know how you did. <clears throat> an old friend, and I use that term loosely, an old friend that I had a love-hate relationship with at work, he used to call that quantifiable. And he used to always tell me, Kelly, if you can't quantify your results, you just don't have any results. And he drove me crazy saying that. He used the word quantify every single day, but now I get it. So instead of saying like, oh, I want to work out more, if you are more specific and say something like, I'm going to work out 20 minutes a day, three days this week, that is quantifiable because you will know whether or not you worked out 20 minutes and you'll know whether or not you worked out three times this week, 20 minutes, three times this week. So it has to be, needs to be very specific, not this broad, 
I want to do more or I want to do less or whatever. It needs to be very specific. <coughs> the second thing is the T is truly doable. So whatever the goal is, it needs to be truly doable in one week's time. You can set bigger goals for more, you know, for more amounts of time. But for right now, we're talking about just something that you can accomplish. You can check it off your list in one week's time. So a goal of meal prepping seven days this week, if you're going to be working doubles, if you're going to be working doubles five of those days, that's not going to happen. So that's not truly doable. So instead, how about something like, I will meal prep with my daughter on Sunday this week so that we have both meals, so that we both have meals ready for this busy week coming up. That would be truly doable. So make sure that it's something that you can get done. Like when we were sick, um, it didn't, it did not make any sense. Um, it did not make any sense for us to set these big grandiose goals because our goal for the day might have been, I'm going to take a shower today. Or I am going to only eat eight cough drops today. Or, you know, those were a little, or I'm going to get in six bottles of Gatorade or whatever. You know, those were the little mini goals that Casey and I had to have for last week because we were not doing any big meal prepping, meal planning. None of that stuff was happening last week. So it has to be truly doable. The A in the star is actionable. So this is where I was talking a few minutes ago about it's something you're going to do and not something that you're not going to do. Um, not only can you not measure, quantify what you have not done, the negativity that surrounds those thoughts sometimes kills it before it can even get started. <clears throat> so rather than set a goal to not eat snacks after dinner, for example, um, try something like this week, I will drink a sugar-free hot cocoa or read that book that I've been meaning to start when I feel like an after-dinner snack. So that's actionable. It's something you're going to do instead of saying, I'm not going to have an after-dinner snack. You, you know, you could pick one of those and say, oh, maybe I'll have a, a sugar-free hot cocoa or maybe I'll go crack open that book that I've been looking at. The last letter R is relevant. So relevant means it has to be relevant to you. This is your goal. It's not my goal. It's not her goal. It's not his goal. It's your goal. So just because your neighbor's twin sister's cousin thinks that you should check out her extreme low-carb, high-intensity workout routine, that doesn't mean that that goal necessarily aligns with yours, okay? Make it relevant. Make it yours. Um, make it, it needs to be relevant. So, okay, and y'all have gone, y'all have gone off on the quit smoking um, topic, which is totally cool. I'm so happy, I'm so proud for you all that have, that have actually stopped smoking. <clears throat> so your homework for this week, and again, I'm talking really fast. I'm talking really fast because I figure I've got about maybe 20 more minutes before this all starts again. So um, your homework for this week is hashtag shoot for the star, not shoot for the stars, shoot for the star, shoot for the S-T-A-R. So that's the star goal, you know, specific, truly doable, actionable, and relevant. Shoot for the star, S-H-O-O-T. F-O-R-T-H-E, and then capital S, capital T, capital A, capital R. Shoot for the star. And I want all of you all to do your homework this week because you've not had homework for two weeks. I have not made y'all do any homework for two weeks, okay? So everybody needs to do their homework this week. I want you to pick one thing, one little mini goal that you know can, you can make it specific. It, will, it is truly doable for you this week. It's actionable, it's something that you're going to do and not something that you're not going to do. And it's something that is relative to your journey. So I want you to pick that for your star goal. <clears throat> yeah, Sarah, you have to do your homework this week. Have to, have to, have to. And thank you, Lynn, for sharing that homework. Hashtag shoot for the star. And you did it exactly right. Yay. Yay, yay, yay. Thank you, Lynn. Good job. Um, but I want everybody to do it. So again, a little mini goal for this week that is specific, truly doable, actionable, and it's relevant to you, and do it, do it, do it, do your homework this week. Really, really want everybody to do it. You know, that would make me feel a lot better. <clears throat> I think that would make my cough a lot better if y'all did your homework. So, Sarah, I just asked again what the homework is, and the homework is to pick, again, one goal. So, let's just make, for an example, <coughs> uh -oh. yeah, we might have 20 minutes before this starts again. So, let's say, as an example, if, um, uh, let's see, if, well, like my friend Karen, so I know she wants to get back to walking again. And so maybe she would say, maybe Karen would say, this week I will walk three days, 20, minute, 20 minutes at a time, 
um, you know, through this week because it's specific. Three days, 20 minutes. It's truly doable. She can do that. It's actionable. It's something she's going to do and not not going to do. And it's relevant because she does love to walk. That is her favorite form of exercise. Oh, or she's been doing um, Pilates. So maybe she could make it relevant to her Pilates that now because she's had COVID. So she's not feeling super fantastic either. I think she's about a week ahead of me. Um, but I think she's I think she's um, about a week ahead of me on her recovery. But um, but maybe she'll make her Pilates. Maybe that'll be her star goal. But anyway, so that's your homework. Do it, do it, do it. Everybody has to do it, including Sarah. Okay, just saying, because y'all have not had to do your homework in two weeks. Okay, we're going to make this the halfway point in the chat because we're hoping that I will make it for the next 20 minutes. I don't know if y'all can see these little tired eyes, these little pitiful tired eyes, but this is the latest I've been up in the last two weeks. Um <clears throat> from having the flu and now from having um, bronchitis. So, um, yeah, these little tired eyes are tired eyes and a little cough are going to make it about 20 more minutes. So we're going to make this the halfway point. I'm so tired, though, that I did not even get my apron out. So we'll just pretend like I put my apron on for the halfway point. I do want everybody, it's a little early in the chat, in the normal chat for water, but I need some of this hot tea with the honey. So everybody go ahead and stop and get your drink of water right now. And if you were new with us, this is normally an hour-long chat when I am well. It's normally an hour-long chat, and in the first 30 minutes, we cover whatever the prior week's topic was for Weight Watchers. In the second 30 minutes, we usually do something fun instead of trying to hold our breath and hope Kelly doesn't cough. So everybody go ahead and get some, um, get some water right now. And yes, the honey does help some. I hear y'all talking about honey. I don't know what... Manu cow honey is. I don't know what that is. What, where would I get that? <clears throat> I am seriously tempted, though, if she was open tomorrow. There is a tea shop here in Knoxville called Tanya Ree's Teas. <clears throat> if she was if she was going to be open tomorrow, um, I would run by there and see if she's got. She has a tea blend, and I cannot think what what the ingredient is, but but she has a tea blend that has something in it that's supposed to help with a cough. So I think she reopens on Tuesday or Wednesday. I don't remember what days. She's not open on Sunday or Monday. Um, but if I'm still coughing the day that she's open, I may run down there too. But anyway, this is the second half of chat number 347. And we are talking about um, how to set goals that work for you. So we already chatted about this, that we've been sick. So Christmas Eve, our oldest granddaughter, Alyssa, started this random, random hacky cough. And... It really kind of sounded like a put on like she didn't she didn't sound sick it was just this random hacky cough she didn't seem sick we didn't get excited we just kept forging ahead you know with holiday plans no fever no nothing else you know no other symptoms but christmas day the fever started um so the fever started erupting for her then her little sister um Bo, um started with her fever they got up to 104, 104.5. Then the next day, Casey got sick. Um, well, and, and also on Christmas, Casey's mother-in-law and her um, her brother-in-law went ahead and came for Christmas. Her father-in-law was already getting sick. We should have known it was coming. <clears throat> and her mother-in-law started going downhill the whole, the whole morning. I mean, she was a trooper. She must have taken some Advil or something because she stayed through the whole Christmas celebration and we kept feeding the girls Motrin Tylenol, Motrin Tylenol, Motrin Tylenol, trying you know trying to keep them perked up enough to be able to open their gifts and things. Um, but by the end, by the day after, we were all laid up in the bed, laid up on the couches, anywhere that we could stay warm and be tended to by an amazing husband, dad, and papa. So John literally waited on all of us hand and foot. He was the only one who didn't get sick. Sick. He had some very mild symptoms, but the rest of us, I guess, because the kids were up in our faces, we were sick, sick, sick. Um, but uh, bless his heart, he tried to make us well, but for days we lived on nothing but carbs and cough drops. I'm serious. We had not for days. We had nothing but carbs and cough drops. He kept trying to bring us real food, and we were just like, like apparently one of the symptoms from the flu is um, one of the symptoms from the, from the flu or one of the side effects from the flu is no appetite, and we had no appetite. So he kept bringing us food, and we kept going, mm, you know, and kind of pushing it away. Um, but so we had carbs and cough drops for days. That's all that we consumed. So we ended up having the flu. <coughs> Mine has settled in my chest as bronchitis. 
Um, I doubt that I'm going to make it this entire the entire 30 minutes or the second half of the chat. So here is my quick take. Um, yeah, and Sarah, we're going to talk about the, the points on the cough drops in a second. So here's my quick take on how to deal with the carbs, the cough drops, and just the general crud while not losing your mind on Weight Watchers. Okay, so... First thing, more hot tea with some honey. Okay, first thing is rest. Your exercise plan will be there when you get back. I am not at all happy about how super low my number of steps or my general activity was during this illness, but literally there was nothing I could do about it. I also know that not resting as much as everybody else did earned me this secondary bronchitis that I'm dealing with now. So. I had, <clears throat> no one else developed this, I did, I think because I kept getting up, going in, coming out, going in, coming out, <clears throat> you know, trying to take care of everybody else, trying to make sure everybody had a shower and everybody was bathed and everybody, you know, that when John was bringing food, that it was distributed and that people would eat if they would eat. Um, so I can promise you that's why I ended up with this secondary case of bronchitis. So rest, it'll all still be there when you get back. It's all still going to be there, um, you know, when you get back. Second thing is, and Sarah just said, meds don't have any points in my mind. Okay, so you need to at least recognize, though, what's going in your mouth. This topic met with heavy debate when I posted the results earlier this week. So I knew, I knew, because I went ahead and went to Weight Watchers, even though I couldn't stay, I couldn't sit there the whole time. And I had been, um, uh, uh, what am I trying to say? Like the doctor had said that I wasn't, I wasn't contagious. I wasn't going to, um, oh, sorry, Sandra said that. Sorry, 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 Sarah. <clears throat> Sandra said that. So I had been to the doctor. I was pronounced not contagious anymore, no fever or whatever, just just generally sick, just this leftover bronchitis. Um, so I went ahead and went to Weight Watchers, but I didn't make it through the whole meeting. I kept coughing, had get up, walk off, cough, come back, get up, walk, cough, you know, come back. Um, but I had a 2.8 pound weight gain. So I had to wrap my head around that, and I knew, because, oh my gosh, I could tell. I was so bloated. I mean, I was so bloated, like, uncomfortably so, and it was an unusual, I don't know, I mean, I don't want to go into too many details, but it was just an unusual feeling, just a bloated, I don't know, just a bloated, bloated feeling. So I needed to kind of wrap, wrap my head around this um, and have some kind of a record of this last two weeks' events so I could put a name on it. So sometimes just naming the situation can allow you to put it to the side and not to start a downward spiral. So I had some options to think about <clears throat> on, on how to remind myself what really happened and how I could move forward. So it would have been really easy to weigh in Tuesday night and Gwen was so sweet, she goes, you don't deserve this. You do not deserve this, you're sick. You do not deserve this. And I said, no, I know I don't deserve, I don't deserve a 2.8 pound Gain. I mean, I know I didn't gain 2.8 pounds in a week and a half, and I'm when I say bloated, I just I can't even bloated, just unexplainably so. Um, but I had to decide. You know, and Debbie said inflammation. I think part. I think that's part of it also. But I had to put. I needed to put a name on it so that I could like <coughs> like block it off in my mind and say, all right, this is not. You know, this is what this is. This is one period of time. Write it down, Kelly. Make a record of it so that when you're going back through, you can go, wait a minute, what happened that week? Because um, <clears throat> it's real easy to forget what happened. So option one, I could have blamed too much holiday food. I could have said, you know, it's the holidays. We've been eating like crazy. We, you know, we've had fudge and cookies, you know, and whatever. That caused the weight gain. Well, that wasn't true in this case. So it would have been really easy to blame, but we barely ate anything. I mean, we, I think we, Casey and I, a couple of those days, we had like a couple of spoonfuls of um, uh, cornbread or just, you know, we just weren't eating that much. So I couldn't, and I didn't enjoy anything that went in my mouth, like nothing that went in my mouth. We had a little bit of soup one day, didn't enjoy it. We just didn't enjoy anything. So mm, that was not option one, was not it. It was not from having too much holiday food or cookies or whatever. That was not, that was not the reason for this. Option two I could have said, well, you know, while I've been sick, Weight Watchers has been fiddling with the app. It's been changing, unchanging, changing again. You can't, um, you can't turn avocado from each into 
like ounces or whatever. I mean, there were a lot of weird glitches that happened while I was sick and I missed a lot of them, but I'm gonna try to dig into some of them this week as I'm feeling better. But it would been really easy for me to go, this is all Weight Watchers fault. They changed the app while I was sick and now I gained 2.8 pounds because of it. <clears throat> um, but those few glitches, they didn't derail me 2.8 pounds. And honestly, I wasn't tracking. I wasn't tracking while I was this sick. Option three, though, was to calculate and record all of the non-food things that were going in my mouth. This option, option number three, was the most volatile when I posted it. Um, I'm still getting some backlash from it. I'm not saying you have to do this. I'm telling you what I needed to do for myself. So it seems like no one, including me, wants to know, wants to know or much less record how many points a week's worth of cough drops is, ibuprofen, sports drinks, basically no activity, no, you know, nobody wants to know how much that adds, you know, how much that adds up to. Um, but what I can say is that writing it down, saying it out loud, that took the power away from the 2.8 pounds um, of a temporary situation. So there was, and okay, and Sarah's reminded me to drink some more water. So <clears throat> this is not the official halfway point. I'd say I'll make it about 10 more minutes before we'll have to wrap the chat up for tonight because <coughs> I can feel it starting again. But nobody, I shouldn't say, well, I wasn't, I wasn't met with um, warm accolades of my recording of how many points I ate in cough drops. I needed to know though, because I needed to know, I, need, I needed this little snapshot in time to remind me, hey, you didn't gain 2.8 pounds that week because you went crazy. And also when that 2.8 pounds comes back off, I don't want to be in the background going, oh yeah, you didn't do anything special to uh, deserve that, but you took off 2.8 pounds. You know, I just kind of needed a reality check so that I didn't beat myself up. And yes, Cynthia, it's exactly right. Don't be too tough on yourself, especially when you're sick. But I needed that reminder of what was going on so that I didn't beat myself up too much. And I also didn't celebrate too much on the other side when this all does, um, you know, come back off. So when I calculated how many points the cough drops were, when I went back and looked to see how many um, Gatorade type drinks that we had been drinking, because we had to stay, you had to stay hydrated. All the medication we're taking, you've got to keep, you know, you've got to keep the fluids going and there's only just so much plain water that you can drink um, to, you know, and, and stay hydrated. <coughs> but, um, but that was not met with a warm welcome. I got a lot of comments like, well, I don't track cough drops. I don't track medicine. I don't track gummy vitamins. Um, I don't track, I don't track, I don't track, I don't track. That's fine. You don't have to track it, but I figured out how many points it was. My body tracked that. So whether or not I wrote it down on paper and whether or not I said, look, for this finite period of time, because now I'm down to like two cough drops a day, Okay, so now I'm down to like two cough drops a day instead of two cough drops like every two hours. So it's already starting to swing in the, you know, in the other direction. Um, I needed to know. I needed to, to write that down because your body knows that. Your body knows how many calories went in. Sick or not, counting it or not, cough syrup, counting or not, your body still counts it as calories. And Debbie said one recolor regular or a sugar-free cough drop is one point. Yes, exactly right. And a lot of people said I should have switched to sugar free. If I had to, if I had to switch, if I had switched to sugar free, we would have a different problem. And we're not going to go into those details because this is not a chat about pooping. Um, but that would have been a totally different problem had I switched to sugar free cough drops. So I chose not to do that. But again, this is a short a short little window I just needed to take a snapshot of that window so that I could remember oh yeah that's what happened that's what happened it's not because we went crazy eating cookies it's because we were sick taking a lot of medication right now I'm taking prednisone so I'm thinking it's probably going to be another week before all this starts washing out of my system I can tell you though I'm not nearly as bloated as I was from not taking as much ibuprofen and not eating as many cough drops okay and then the last thing I want to say tonight before I go is when you're going through all this kind of stuff, as soon as you feel well enough, go ahead and make a star goal um, for yourself. And Melissa, the other, uh, let's see, the girls are like nothing happened because you know how kids are. And Casey still has kind of a, she has a hacky cough, but hers didn't settle in her chest like mine did. So she's feeling much better and I feel much better. I just, when the cough starts, you just can't stop. Um, 
So when you feel, when, you, when you're through all the rest of this and when you feel better, when you feel well enough to make a little star goal for yourself, and remember we talked about star goals in the first half, they don't have to be huge. They don't, it doesn't have to be this huge, grandiose, gonna do this for all year, you know, just some little star goal that's specific, that's the S, truly doable in a week's time, actionable and um, relevant to you, make yourself a little star goal. And yeah, Debbie, so when I started looking up everything that I was taking and trying to figure out what was making me so bloated, I think it was the ibuprofen. I stopped taking ibuprofen and I switched to Tylenol and a lot of that bloated feeling went away. It was crazy. But anyway, so the star goal that I have made for myself this week, because I'm still sick, this nagging bronchitis um, it still has me tired. I'm still prone to um, uncontrollable um, fits of coughing. I'm winded very easily, like we went to the grocery store today and John actually came in to check on me because it was taking me so long because I was like, just do dolly and down the aisle because I got so winded so easily. <clears throat> um, so I made a star goal for me for this week that hits the mark this week because I needed to be, you know, something that I can truly do this week. Um, so, and when the prednisone is done, I'll set another star goal for the next week. And then when I feel a little bit better, I'll set one, again, another one for the next week and then the next week. And then we'll see how fast I can kick this 2.8 pounds of carbs and cough drops to the curb. So specific for me, I have not had anywhere near enough veggies to speak of the last two weeks, like nearly none. So a specific goal that I could do, something that I could do, a star goal that I could do that was very specific. I joined veggie, uh, Julie's Veggie Challenge that's over on the If You Have an Egg Facebook group. So I went ahead and joined that challenge and my goal is I will hashtag bulk it up one meal a day with veggies for the next seven days. So for the next seven days, I will pick one meal a day. It won't be breakfast. It will be either lunch or dinner. <coughs> and it's getting ready to start. Hold on. So the specific, specific is um, that I will hashtag bulk it up one meal a day for the next seven days. So I can measure that. It's very specific and I can measure it. I will know whether or not I hashtag bulked up with vegetables one meal a day for seven days. I'll know that because I'll be tracking it. Okay, the truly doable. Um, I took a slow stroll around the store today. Very slow. <coughs> Again, I can't believe how winded I still am. And I stocked up on fresh, I stocked up on fresh veggies. Um, I stocked up on some canned veggies. I got some frozen veggies. And I will mention, in case you all hadn't noticed this, I got the peas that I got were frozen, not canned. I don't know if you all know this or not, but I've never ever found canned peas that did not have sugar in them and were not points, like one or two points per serving. <coughs> If you'll get frozen peas and just make sure that the only ingredient is peas then these are zero points so I got some frozen veggies I got a couple of different um, cauliflower uh, rice blends I got a couple of different cauliflower rice blends this one is a is rainbow cauliflower so it's got purple green orange and white rice cauliflower which is gonna make it super fun too this one is an Asian stir-fry <clears throat> it's uh, rice, cauliflower, fire roasted corn, sweet peas, red bell peppers, and seasoning. This one, my guess will, is, will probably have a point um, per, but that's some more veggies that I can um, hashtag bulk up with. Then I got some chickpea um, penne, um, which is not technically a vegetable because it's chickpeas. It's not a vegetable. Um, but then I did go ahead and get some more um, frozen um, plant-based bowls. So this already has, like this one already has, uh, let me find it on here. It does already have some veggies in it. Of course, it's made with a plant-based protein, which that doesn't count for, that doesn't count as a vegetable, but it's a heck of a lot closer to a vegetable than meat. Um, but like this, and maybe do some, let's see what flavor is this one, meatball marinara. I've got some frozen broccoli in the, in the freezer. How easy would that be <coughs> to cook this and then just add a bunch of frozen broccoli on there and boom, boom, boom. <clears throat> Hashtag bulk it up. And I'll let y'all know as the week goes how, what combinations I come up with for those. Um, yeah, so that we can hashtag bulk up um, the, our meals. 
and then actionable, I will be bulking up my veggies, not not eating carbs or cough drops. So <coughs> it would be easy to say, hey, my goal for this week is to not eat as many cough drops, but I can't really, how, do, how would I count that? And how, that's not like a, you know what I mean? That's not like a, a goal, it's just not a goal. So instead I said, I will be bulking up one meal a day, seven days this week, um, so I'm doing something. I'm actually doing something, and it's something that I can check off on a list, and I'll know when it's done. And then relevant, I know my body. Um, it craves vegetables. If I don't have them, it starts craving them, um, and I know that I'm going to heal faster if I get some more vegetables in. So if I quit laying around on the couch, and I'm not saying get out and run a marathon because I'm obviously not up to it yet, but I know if I quit just laying around eating cornbread and cough drops or other carbs, get some more veggies in, simple things, simple veggies. I'm not talking stand on my feet and cook for hours and hours and hours. Super simple things I can get done. Um, and the, and the, I know, I know that I'm gonna heal faster. I know that I'll get well faster if I have some of these. I've also, I also bought some bagged salads and I've got the fresh vegetables to go into some of the bagged salads. Um, and Casey and I did split a bagged salad the other night. Just having some, ba just getting some more vegetables in my body I already thought, okay, this is this is a little bit better, you know, I'm feeling a little bit better um, here. So, and the veggie challenge might not be for you. So that might not be what you need to focus on this week, but it's right for me. So you need to find something this week that's right for you, a star goal that is right for you. So <clears throat> I have made it almost 45 minutes. Um, I am going to, yes, thank you, Trish. I know I've made it almost 40, Trisha said, don't push yourself. I've made it almost 45 minutes. I can tell you I am to my limit. Um, so my, these little, I know you can see how sleepy, how sleepy my little eyes are. And John's already got my cough medicine portioned out and ready and sitting and waiting on me um, for when I get home. So I hope you all gained a little something. I mean, I hope you um, learned a little something about yourself. Um, and yes, Karen, I am headed home right now. Um, John's got my medicine ready for me and I'll be taking it and then heading straight to bed. <clears throat> but I can't wait to get some more veggies back. Um, back into my diet this week. The veggie challenge is over on the If You Have an Egg Facebook group, um, and you're welcome to join that at any time. There's no, literally no commitment. You just go over there and say, I'll do it. Um, and then if you want to post some pictures and show us what you're eating, Julie would love that. And I do thank her again so much for hostessing that for us. Um, but you all have a great week. I hope to be much, much better next week. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, sorry about all this. Don't normally sound like this. But go ahead and let that next video roll over. I promise you'll enjoy it. Um, and please go ahead and subscribe. And do your homework, do your homework, do your homework, everybody. So I hope you all have a great week. And I hope to sound much better um, next week and have much more energy. <sighs> so thank you all very much. And I will see you next week. Thanks for all the well wishes. Good night. See you next week.